Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you're a new subscriber, I would like to invite you to use the channel playlists. The playlists are the best way for you to navigate your way and sort of catch up with all the information that has been put on this blog over the last four years. The Master's Voice Prophecy blog is now officially four years old since I started to write down the prophetic messages of the Lord in May 2019 and publish them for public viewership, public understanding, and to be a blessing to the body of Christ first. However, it does not mean that the prophecies on the blog only started in 2019. The Lord has been leading me into deeper understanding of the things that will be concerning the end times, the future times, primarily affecting the nation of the United States, but extrapolated across all nations, things from the Bible that have been poorly explained or not touched upon at all to the modern day Christian church. And so if you are interested in catching up on the information on the master's voice, I cannot recommend the playlists enough. All that you have to do to find out where the playlist is, is just look below the video until you see the channel name that's highlighted with a black or a gray box. Click that and it takes you to the dashboard. And there you will see, I think it says home videos, channels, playlists. And on the playlist, you can find information such as the Russia and China playlist, which is one of the most important playlists on the master's voice. That's where I started putting prophecies in, in order on this video blog. That's, those are not the first prophecies that I used on the blog, but they're definitely the first ones that I used here on YouTube. The Lord said that they were the first ones to be made into video. So I recommend that you start there, but there's also a sin series. There are quite a lot of people who say that they are Christians. And at the same time, there's this massive gap in that they're living how they want to. They don't live convicted by the Holy Spirit. They're living by their own personal rules. And they think that underneath the canopy of their rules, they can still also have the canopy of God's grace, God's protection, and God calling them a child of God. But please bear in mind that the true children of God are those who actually know God according to his word. The true children of God are people who love the Lord and they honor him. They give him reverence. They have the fear of God in them, which means they have an inbuilt mechanism that teaches them who God is in reference to humanity and how far that we can go. God has given us freedom and free will, but children of God who have the fear of God in them know that there is a limitation to how far we can take our so-called freedom so that we do not break God's laws. Many people are living in flagrant and open sin. They break God's laws with how they control their mouth. They break God's laws with what is in their hearts. They break God's laws with what their appetites are, what they hunger for, the things they like to do, their habits, the things that they think about, the secret desires of their inner man. And yet they still say that they are children of God. And this is deception. If you live like the devil, you are actually a child of the devil. And even if you are convinced that you are a child of God, because you're sitting in one of these lukewarm, pointless churches out there, you will be exposed in the coming times because the coming times that we are already in and that we are heading deeper into are going to very much test the souls of men. And so the sin series on the master's voice was a very intimate look at what God calls sin, what God will not tolerate. I highly recommend if you are someone who is struggling with habits, that you go to the sin series and you work your way from the oldest video in that series to the newest, and you will find out what God says is unacceptable for the Christian. There is also the supernatural playlist, supernatural playlist. I think I started that in sometime in 2021. I was not going to actually touch those prophecies for quite a while, but the Holy Spirit was putting severe pressure on me and telling me celestial, they need to know these things. They need to know. So the supernatural playlist 
delves into the world of these demonic creatures that call themselves aliens. That is the name that they are primarily known to us as humans. And that is the name God uses for them. So whatever your personal name may be, when you come here to the master's voice and you hear me using the term aliens, I am using the term that all humanity is familiar with the stuff that the majority of people are watching on the Gaia channel, ancient aliens, the history channel. God wants you to know what these beings really are that they are demonic, satanic beings that are going to be coming into the human space in the future, presenting themselves as gods, presenting themselves as helpers, and yes, presenting themselves also as family members, as a kind of kin to humanity, and wanting to amalgamate with human society, live with us and blend with us. There's also the supernatural playlist that looks at giants of old, the Nephilim, the story of what actually happened in Genesis six. So there are many things that people who have been in what I'll only call mainstream Christianity are not aware of. And yet the people in the world, some of the people in the world are at the forefront of these things at the forefront of understanding about the undead zombies and about returning sky gods, the Anunnaki and things like that. And yet the people in the church are willfully ignorant or blissfully ignorant, not knowing that our God is at the core of all these things. So no matter what has brought you here, a friend's recommendation, you've had this video sitting on this channel, sitting in your phone for months, and you finally decided to give it a shot. Whatever has brought you here, please know that if you give the Holy Spirit a chance, he will be able to minister to you in ways that might change your mind about what you think you know, ways that might convict you about things that you think are okay as a Christian when they are not, or it might spur you on to greater works and greater heights in the kingdom of God as a child of God. It doesn't matter if you've been saved a short time, saved a long time we have not attained. We are still in this race. And if you do not want to exit this race with a fail, with an F, this is a good place to invest your time. Another thing is when you're listening to the videos, I'm going to warn you, especially if you are in the United States, I have already said that it is very evident that there are many spirits at work in this country. And one of the greatest is opinions. This spirit that is in people that causes them to exalt their opinions so high that they think their, ex oh, their personal experience, so their lived experience, what they know, what they've studied, the books they've read, the memes that they have read on social media and have now amalgamated into their faith, making their faith corrupted and weak. We actually believe, we minus me, people actually believe that this thing of their opinion is exalted above what the word of God says. So there's this weird dichotomy, this difference, this tilt, this awkwardness in a lot of people that makes them think that the onus is on me to prove to you that the things I'm speaking of are true. You could not be more wrong. You could not be more off center. God has sent me to say the things that are true. The dreams, the visions that God has given me, they are to help the Christian. They are to help the non-Christian. So if you believe that there's a further burden on me to do extra work, to convince you that I am telling the truth, you are mistaken. If you let this information pass you by, I can guarantee you, as I said in 2019, when I first started, when I used to only do written prophecies, you and your family members will meet this very same information further up the road. The only difference is that you will be like the people in Noah's day who did not prepare. You will be like the people in Noah's day who saw Noah every day on their way to the market or on their way to wherever they were going, watching Noah build that boat. And they thought it was interesting until the first drops of rain began to fall. And we all know how that ended. To put not too fine a point on it, little babies drowned. Don't think that there were not little babies in the, ocean, in the ancient world. Tiny babies and toddlers drowned because their parents exalted their opinion that Noah was a fool above the fact that Noah was building salvation in a different form. But because they were so high in their minds, they became blinded and they were fools 
and they paid for it with their souls and the souls of their little ones. And so with that said, I'm continuing in I'm continuing in the series concerning homosexuality. So if you come to the master's voice and you find me in the middle of a series, you need to have the understanding that a series is where I am handling a block of prophecies concerning a theme that God wants to discuss. And that means that for as long as God wants to discuss that theme, I will deal with that series, no matter who likes it, no matter who feels it is uncomfortable, no matter who feels it is graphic. Again, I am not here to win your approval. I am here to exercise my function as a prophetic member, um, messenger of God. That means I'm not doing it according to any American party. I'm not doing it according to anybody's preference. I am doing it in the way God has instructed and the way God has instructed is honest, blunt, and fully transparent. Why? So that when you die clinging to whatever sin I'm dealing with in a series, you cannot stand before God and say that you were confused. So because there are things working to distract people, they pay attention to all kinds of things in the videos instead of listening to what the Holy Spirit wants them to know. Just know, if you mishear anything, if you don't understand anything, this is the modern era. Pause the video, take it back to where you were confused and listen again, because I guarantee you it is not what I said that is confusing. It is your ears and your heart that are fighting the truth. This is a difficult prophecy. It is graphic. I am not keeping anything from anyone. I always told you we were going to discuss the fact that American women are going to lay with dogs. And today I'm going to handle one of two extremely difficult prophecies. And this is exactly what the Lord said. And by his grace, we will get through it. Amen. This prophecy feeds on a prophecy that I did just a few, I would say it's a week, maybe a week and a half. This one is called A Falling Away, and this prophecy is from quite a while back. I had basically not noticed that this is in my prophecy archives. This prophecy is called A Falling Away. So we already did a prophecy called, I already did a prophecy called The End of the Age, The Great Falling Away. And now, also from 2022, this is August 3rd, 2022, not yet published in writing. This one is called A Falling Away, and it is discussing the coming of compelling sexual spirits into the world. So uh, people already know, I've spoken quite clearly, that human sexuality is compelling. This is why it is put in TVs. I mean, in movies, in adverts, this is why sex is used to sell. Sex draws the eye. Sex makes you look, even if you are Puritan, even if you are pious, even if you are a monk, if raw sex is brought near to you, if that power of seduction and suggestion is brought near to a person, even if that person is walking in holiness, this thing has the ability to draw the eye. And once the eye is drawn, what's following next is a hook being inserted in the heart. And where your heart goes, your body, your limbs, this is your arms, your legs, your body itself will follow. So how is it then that God is going to warn his people and warn people who are already in this who may want to come out. How then is God going to warn humanity to guard against the types of spirits that are coming? It is simple. You are not supposed to look. By looking, Eve desired the fruit that was on that tree. The Bible says that she saw that the tree was beautiful and that the fruit was good for eating. It was Eve's eye that basically led to the entire debacle that caused mankind to lose their power. So this spirit of sexual immorality that is going to come into the world, it is not just a visual spirit, but it will operate very powerfully visually. And if you are not one who is working on discipline and denial, you're going to be what I will just call the first domino to fall. The spirit of sexuality, of sexual immorality, is about to be released on the earth. So this is God speaking 
basically almost a year ago, August the 3rd, all things will be acceptable in sexuality. All things will be permissible. In the sin series, God was already speaking about things that are not acceptable, like adults having sex in front of children, like adults touching children, like adults using children as ritualistic sex partners where they rape children and then murder them. I spoke about those things in depth and there are still more prophecies from 2021 to go through on that. Everything acceptable in sexuality means that an animal with a person will become acceptable in sexuality. And I'm speaking squarely of what America will accept and do. Nothing will be taboo. Nothing will be illegal. Also, nothing will be hidden. These acts that are causing some people to cringe right now and clutch their pearls, it will be outside in the open. So you are just going to have to either cover your eyes with duct tape or stay home because it will be brazen. Most of the prophecies that I've received concerning this time, it will be outside it will be on media. It will be available as TV programs on American TV. And what I saw in those days is that it had no XXX rating anymore. It will be called preference-based content and it will not be illegal. And if your 10 year old wants to watch it, you are not allowed to stop the 10 year old from watching it because preference based means that the child already will be legally emancipated. I hope you are listening to me, whether you are a lawmaker, whether you are a judge, whether you are a cop, whether you are a parent, whether you are just a 21 year old guy who has his own apartment and can't believe what I'm saying, all this is coming. Preference based content will be on TV. Minors will be allowed to watch it. These children will be wild out of hand like you cannot believe. They will be 14 with their 44-year-old lover. And you will, not, you will not be able to find a single court where you can go and fight and fight off that predator, off your child. It will be legal and your child will be the one giving evidence against you, saying that you are trying to stop true love. What am I saying? I'm prophesying a time where the heart will break it will break a million times a day as you walk past minors and their old lovers. And you will not know if the child is with that lover against their will or if the child is fully a willing participant. Most people would like to live in this dream world where the pedophiles will come out and the pedophiles will have all the rights and the poor children, the poor children, these children will be choosing these old people. You look at the 15-year-old girls now and tell me if you really think that the only thing stopping them from dating 35-year-old men with Maseratis is the fact that they are minors. They are already hot for these men. People come to my Facebook posts and they complain and say, how are we supposed to guard ourselves against these young girls? Because these young girls are too much. And yes, they are. If you have eyes and you see these young people in the street, what they do the only thing restraining them is the law and the law is going to go away because the beast is rising in the United States. Every law is going to be rolled back. Every law is going to be repealed. Every restraint is going to move away. One of the prophecies that the Lord gave me very recently, I saw a hand come from heaven. The hand handed the United States of America a, a checkbook. It was a blank check. There was nothing on the checkbook. The hand came from heaven and handed America a blank checkbook and she was allowed to write basically her own blank check and America wrote her destruction. She basically removed every restraint and God did not stop her. This country wrote a blank check and at that time, what you cannot imagine became legal, okay. And the Lord stepped back into the cloud. The hand withdrew back into the cloud. And at that time, America began to destroy herself. And I mean, destroy herself in such an epic way that I saw in that prophecy, foreigners watching, 
people stopped coming here because this country was so filthy and defiled that even in countries that have places like red light district, where they have grown consenting women doing all kinds of, uh, prostitute and, and, uh, pornographic acts, those kinds of countries, they stopped desiring America as a holiday destination. They stopped coming here because this country was so disgusting with sexual filth that I saw, you know, these men that come and they always have the backpack on their back and they're just moving from city to city and just, you know, they're just having the American experience. They stopped because people were having sex in the street. It was a father and his son. They were so disgusted that tourism stopped to America. It will become the worst of the worst of the worst place. And the Lord will allow America because America has already told God over the last recent decades that she doesn't want him anywhere. Administration after administration, for those who are about to start yelling and saying it's the Democrats, oh no, it's the Republicans, it's the nation. The nation is defiled and the nation tends to think according to color lines and political lines. And I am not a part of that. I am speaking according to biblical lines. And God has sent me to tell America that you erased your last line. And so this is where you are heading. Sexual immorality where all things are acceptable. All things are permissible. There is no no. There is no no. There will be no no. All things will be yes. And the Lord said, people do not understand what is being said. He was speaking to me. This is dictation I'm reading you. These are not my thoughts. This is what was dictated to me. And I wrote it down. He said, people don't understand what's being said. And I can tell most people don't understand what I'm saying. Most people have this failed hope. It is a failed hope. Most people have a failed hope that what I'm saying will have a limit. Most people in America always, there's a seed in them. If my people, if my people who are called by my name, there's not enough people called by his name. This, this bed of the church is, is filled with weeds. The weeds are choking up the lawnmower. And when God pulls the weeds out, you're going to find that it's like six blades of grass left. And that is not enough, my people. So, he said, people don't understand what is being said. They truly do not comprehend what is meant by a spirit of sexual immorality. A spirit of sex sexual immorality is as if you took the principality of Leviathan and you took the principality of um, lust and you took the principality of perhaps, let's say, Jezebel and you took the principality of seduction and you rolled them all up and you baked them at 1 billion degrees for a billion years. And then you released that thing on mere human flesh. So human sexuality by itself is already, if you see someone you like and the two of you spend a little bit of time, there begin to go these waves between the two of you. People call it law of attraction, but it's just that pull one to another. So that's already there. But when you compound that natural process by demonic spirits that rule in the heavenly places that have very strong waves that come off, this is why you find, for instance, that rape is increasing in the world because men are coming under this compulsion that because they in their weakness, their structural weakness, they're not walking in holiness. The mind is already open to lust. The heart is already open to covetousness. I see that. I want that. Why shouldn't I have that? That's why people are getting raped. And it's not just street rape. You find that friends, the, your male friends are raping their own friends. They're drugging them. They're tricking them. They're inviting them to places and giving them drinks with dangerous substances in it. And then just gathering eight boys and they all sleep with you. And three people are recording it. And then next thing you know, you are all over the internet. You wake up broken and destroyed as a young woman, lacking wisdom, going to a place that your parents don't even know you're going. And in a moment of time, your life is destroyed. America has had too many cases like that. And especially when the boys are in high ranking places, when they are quarterbacks or when they're rich, nothing happens. You get destroyed and then their rich parents protect them. And it's just too bad for you. These spirits are strong enough to move people. And in this prophecy, God said that even the elect will struggle with these spirits. The elect are people who are committed to prayer, committed to fasting, committed to Jesus. They're not playing with their Christianity. God says that everyone 
Even people in his stable are going to struggle with these types of thoughts. So you are going to need to do extra. This is not one of those, oh, God will do it. God will do it. No, you're going to need to do extra if you are going to overcome and fight this. So he says that people really don't understand about what the spirit of sexual immorality is. It will be a very strong press. It will feel like you are almost being commanded to do it. And you will need to have strong internal resistance to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to look at men as a man. I'm not going to think about women or fantasize. I will not allow a single thought to penetrate my helmet of salvation. I will not tolerate it. There is a great spiritual presence being released from the kingdom of darkness, and it comes working with demonic power and satanic manifestation to afflict people like unseen whips and make them into their worst possible selves. So we know the Bible says in the last days that men will become lovers of themselves. What does it really mean to become a lover of yourself? In order to really truly love yourself, you have to say that you are top grade personality. And that means that you have to become functionally blind to all your flaws and all your mistakes. You have to say, the world is blessed because I'm here. And I think that the world should do more to make sure that what I need, I get. I think that more time should be devoted to me as an individual. And I do not think that I should be denied whatever it is that I desire. Once a person is thinking like that, when a person begins to observe what other people have, even if it is the body of other people, they will begin to work on ways to get what they believe because of spiritual, spiritual misalignment, spiritual deception by Satan, they will begin to work to get what they think they deserve. And God says that the satanic manifestation of these powers that are coming, please read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 all the way to verses 11. I've covered that enough times here. It will turn people into their worst selves. And then he said that anyone who is still suffering from sexual immorality, anyone who has a compromised holy walk, anyone who is compromised in personal holiness will become a victim of this. I've spoken of this before. You that cannot keep your pants zipped up, you that cannot keep your bra and underwear on, you are the first line, not of defense, but the first line of collapse. You are the first people who will go down to the same sex trans spirit that is coming. The fact is that you are already in sexual immorality, which is an offense against your own body. So you do not have the fence of holiness around you because you are keeping yourself if you are not in a sanctioned and godly marital relationship, man to woman. If you are divorced, if you are a widow, a widower, if you are teen, if you are a single person, you are not supposed to be engaged in sexual activity of any kind of any kind, it is not acceptable. You are supposed to be living in personal sanctification until the Lord brings you into a relationship. But if you are in sexual immorality, fornication, if you are in adultery, if you are in same sex, the Lord says you are already part of sexual immorality. And when these demons come, you will be the first ones to go down. However, he said, even those who are keeping the holy armor of God will not be exempted from this, for this is a testing spirit, a tempting power that comes from the kingdom of the devil. So if you're not understanding why, for instance, I mentioned someone in same sex, you may be someone who is in the homosexual lifestyle, either as a male or a female. You've had your relationship, maybe you took advantage of 2015 and you got married. What God is saying is that when the spirit comes in, even if you were monogamous in your gay marriage, you will start to become promiscuous. So problems will creep into that happy home, quote fingers. Problem, problems will creep into that happy homes and you will find a lot of homosexuals are now starting to have pro problems in their monog previous monogamous relationships. One of them will generally, the only word to use is go a whoring. That one will start to say, well, we, we got married, but we didn't say that we were exclusive. 
I hope you can hear the madness in that because marriage is obviously exclusive. They will start to say, well, you know what? We got married too fast, or I, I think I got married too young. I've given you my youth. I'm only 28 and I, I, I've got the best of my years ahead of me. So I'm, I'm going to this, to this orgy party and you are going to have to do what you need to do. People will start to do that. People will start to do that even in straight marriages. These spirits will come and they will test any weakness. So if you are married and harboring lust in yourself or you, you're, you're harboring lust in yourself and then you think, if I get married, having a woman will take care of that lust. It will not. You will end up raping your own wife in that marriage or you will end up going a whoring with women. And after Satan has made you a prostitute that sleeps with others while married, you will then shift to men, women, a lot of you are going to see your husband start to play ball for the other team. Men that you have been married to for such a long time are going to prove a heartbreak and a disappointment to women. In this prophecy, God was saying that people will say, well, you know, I, I thought I was straight, but I finally uh, found my inner self and I will become gay. You will hear the words of that demon coming out of people's mouths as they tell you that after 48 years of being straight, they found their inner gay. This is not reality. This is the fact that that spirit has pierced their armor, if they had armor, but it was weak or just pierced raw into their hearts because they had no armor. They did not know God. They did not honor God and they were just living with themselves as God and they will be toppled by the other small G gods who are coming. He says that this is testing and this is tempting from the kingdom of the devil. Homosexuality will sweep the nations until it gets to where people who have never had a gay thought in their lives will be affected by it. You are normal. You are heterosexual. You are married. You are single and you love the opposite sex as you were built to. This spirit of homosexuality, same to same, will gather strength like a tsunami until people who have never given it a thought will find themselves being affected by the thought and if you are not strong enough to fight off and break the stronghold that that thought, just like a wrestler, when they wrestle at the Olympics, real wrestling, the whole point is to try and lock the other person. You're supposed to lock them for a certain number of seconds. And if you pin them, you get the points. This spirit will be trying to pin people, straight people, and the gay community, as they say, is going to be here for it. They're going to be cheering it on. They're going to be cheering from the sidelines and saying, come over to same life because same life is life life. And that is a lie. And if you do not pin this thought, if you do not pin the urge, it will pin you. He said they will start to look at desire and crave their own sex as partners and people will also struggle with images that they are not even looking at or seeking out, but they will start to see these pictures in their heads and have to battle against them. This is the realm of spiritual attack and it is necessary to fight it in the spirit and overcome it. So you're sitting basically and having your lemonade and all of a sudden, just like the recent prophecy that I made just a few days ago, a thought comes into your mind. You should really give women a try, Melanie. You've been with men your whole life. Why don't you switch it up? The minute that thought pierces your mind like an arrow and you do not curse that thing with the fire of the Holy Spirit and say, this is abomination from the pit of hell. And I curse you, Satan, for your evil projection. And I reject you by the power of the blood of Jesus. You will not enter into the garden of my heart to plant an evil seed. I destroy you by the sword of the spirit that is in my mouth. I uproot you by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And I curse you to burn to ashes. If you don't go full metal jacket, like you just heard me say, so that that thing will burst into flame and die, you will eventually end up in a fight for your sexual identity. And you will not be able to later say, I don't know how I got here. I don't know how I ended up with three wives. You will be a polyamorous half Dating, non binary, gender bending, trans person. Trans has gone to such an extent 
that the man is moving over to be a woman. He says he's a trans woman. And then when he moves over to be a woman, he says he's not interested in the men. So he says he's a woman. And since women are supposed to date men, the trans man who becomes a woman is supposed to date another man, which is homosexuality. But the trans men, real men are saying that they're women, calling themselves trans women, and then saying that they are lesbian, meaning that they move back to liking women who they had access to as men already. If it sounds confusing, that's because it's end times madness and it is confusing. And if you spend too much time lingering on it, over the line, you will go. This is what the Bible means in Isaiah 5 and 20, when it says calling evil good and good evil, up will be down and down will be up and wet will be dry and the sun will be the moon. Backwardness will reign. Confusion will reign in the time of the end and Satan will sit like a bullfrog over all of it, laughing and laughing and laughing because he has brought the chaos that he dreamed from the garden into the world. You will need to fight a spiritual battle if this thing should pierce you, if these fiery darts should land on you because your shield is improperly held or you're bad with the sword. You will need to fight it spiritually, not by going to a therapist or confiding in your best friend. You will need to race to the shelter of the cross and begin to plead the blood of Jesus for what is bent or being bent to become straight. The Lord says that the rise of homosexual attraction will not be by any natural desire. It will be by a greatly powerful spiritual desire that will attack any weak points it finds in a person. Any weak points. So this means that if you're on the crystal meth and if you're on the magic mushrooms and you're on the micro dosing, the holes that I've always warned you about will now begin to give access. If you have a pervasive habit of embellishing the truth, which is basically just lying, you're on social media and you're trying to point to to paint a spiritual picture that you're not, Satan actually sees you for who you are. Social media people, you don't know how dangerous it is to go out there and purport to be a strong Christian when you are not. When the devil and the demons get done dragging you, your social media page will be like a crime scene. All the people that you're showing off in front of now, they will wonder why you've been gone for six months, but you've been gone for six months because that's how long it will take you to recover from cutting your breasts off. You are playing a dangerous game. Don't be like King Josiah who went to fight a battle with King Ahab that he did not inquire with God about. Many of you are so unwise. Josiah went to fight a battle that God never promised to cover him in. Why? Because he went to try and operate in the realm of warfare when God actually never expected him to, be, to see him in any battle. God is not expecting to see some of you pretending to be prophets, pretending to be evangelists, pretending to be teachers. You're not called to those offices and you don't have what it takes to move in those deep waters. When the sharks come after you, don't cry. Don't cry because Josiah went to battle and when they saw him, they were looking for Ahab to kill him. But when Josiah was seen because Ahab went into battle disguised. When Josiah was seen, the captain of the opposite side said, we have instructions to kill the king. That one is dressed like a king. Go after him. And they began to hunt him down on the battlefield. And he had to cry out to God. He had to cry out to God, repenting, sorry. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the captain and the other pursuers. And they saw, oh no, yeah, that's a king, but that's not the right king. Don't pretend out there to be what you're not. There's very high penalties. If God didn't call you to the arena, stop it. Because when Satan brings this fight to your door, any fight to your door, and you don't have what it takes, you will go down publicly because you are not what you purported to be privately. That's just for free. And so the Lord says it will be a great, powerful spiritual desire that will attack weak points in a person. So this is the time to be honest about your weak points. This is not the time to be acting like a spiritual guru 
or a spiritual bastion. If you know you have weak points, retire and fix those weak points. When people are in a marathon and the tire blows out, they don't continue cycling on a bike with a puncture. They pull off to the side of the road and they get a patch so that they can continue the race. Same-sex desires will become the top most acceptable thing in society. And people will no longer castigate others or criticize it, but it will become praised as a new age of sexual liberation and freedom. In 2022, I spoke of a very difficult prophecy. It is called Dry Rivers, Dry Wombs. In that prophecy, the Lord showed me a vision in which a man cut off his physical sexual organs in a live stream, because the Lord says in the future, people will be doing terrible things for shock value. He cut off his sexual organs. And as he was doing it, he was telling people that he was doing it because he was tired of being defined as a man and that gender or what I should just call sex, sex was defining him as a male. And he said he wanted to be free from that. He wanted to be liberated, to be, uh, to be nothing, basically not man, not woman. And so he cut it off in front of people on a live stream. It was a TED talk. God was showing me the future psychosis where America will go. And so this thing will be praised. This thing will not be castigated. There are many people saying, oh, this is just, uh, we need to fight this. We need to fight this. Prophecy tells you what is ahead. So while you are fighting here in 2023, my eye by the Lord has seen that you will lose. You will lose. LGBTQ will be, if not the sole most powerful, one of the most powerful lobbies in this country. If you think that the Bible says that the beast will not regard the desire of women, and you don't know that it means that the person who will fulfill this office literally has no use for the female whether it is the female as a mother, you can already see the word mother has died in America and it has been replaced with birther, birthing person. Woman has died in America. Nobody in America knows what a woman is anymore. It is now a person who bleeds monthly. The word woman is becoming a dirty woman, a dirty word, and yet you, you still don't understand what the scripture means when it says will not regard the desire of woman. There is no use for the female and conversely, ironically, at the same time, the principality of Jezebel will be one of the most powerful in this nation once we come under female rulership. So there is meaning to these things. And I take my time to lay them out that you may understand. It will be praised as a new age of sexual liberation and freedom. People will be openly gay who it was thought it is impossible that they be gay. This is red-blooded men who like women, red-blooded women who like men, who are content to be their natural birth sex and who are content to like people across the spectrum who are opposite from them, different from them. Those people, the Lord says, you will find them being gay and you will be absolutely amazed. And they will say, yes, I thought that I was straight too, but I decided to stop fighting my feelings and be who I really am. Homosexuality will be acceptable and comfortable in society as all societal mores and boundaries are broken down in a new age of total acceptance of every form of evil. So what does the day of Noah say? What did the Lord say? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. But what does he really mean? To those who know what happened in Genesis 6, as the fallen angels came and took wives of all whom they desires, and the women bear great giants whose height was above 3,000 L's. What does it really mean when societal mores and boundaries are broken down and a new age dawns where there is total acceptance of every form of evil? It means that if someone is childless and wants to pay a surrogate to have a baby for them, which is already happening in a lot of places, they can. 
but it also means that if Satanism is now a totally legal, acceptable relation, uh, religion, and somebody needs six children to sacrifice for their live stream, they can buy one and they can murder the children online and it will not be a problem. You look at me, I look at you. I'm executing my duty and I will bring it as it is. When it says every form of evil, you are childish if you think that there are limitations to forms of evil. You are childish if you think that there will not be cooking programs in which the food is people and they will tell you the best way to keep fingers tender on the bone is to braise them lightly with a honey glaze. You will hear these things and in the future, if you are still alive, you will remember what the Bible says. Now I tell you of it before it comes so that when it comes, you will know I am he. Since I am not a he, you know that I'm quoting the scripture where God is boasting of himself, how his spirit speaks what does not exist but is coming. Every form of evil means that Satan's complete and total imagination will be unleashed upon people with no restraint, Nothing is off limits. Public executions with CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, Fox, Newsmax in attendance, capturing it live, beaming it into your home, your wall-to-wall -wall plasma that you can put your hand into for an immersive experience. It is a form of evil. It will be. There will be no cut off. So that means that if your heart is not robust, your heart will fail you exactly as Luke 21 and 26 says it will. Men's hearts failing them for the things that they see coming upon the earth. When the first live stream bestiality program starts and every new week is a woman with a Pomeranian or a man with a Great Dane, your heart will fail you. And even if you smash the television, it will happen outside as I will discuss. People will be greatly bisexual. People will move easily along a fluid sexuality of male and female, sometimes having both in the same encounter. So you will not have to say that you are for any team. You can have all the teams. You can be a team all by yourself and there will be no castigation, no criticism for that. In the prophecy called the iron pen, I explained clearly to the United States of America that God says that the time is coming that if you speak against LGBTQ, you will not be canceled as is happening now. You will not get hate speech as is happening now. You will be fined and go to jail. You will face a lawsuit and when you go to court, you will not get the outcome that some people have been getting where they win based on religious freedom. Religious freedom will be done away with, and what will happen is that you will lose. You will lose that case. You will fail. Just a moment, please. It will count against you. If they want to use the female bathroom, they will. If they want to become, if a man who is trans saying that he's a woman wants to become the sexual counselor for young abused girls, that vulnerable position where girls who have been through sexual abuse need another female to talk to about what happened to them to get counseling and healing, that man applies for that job. You can't tell the man that he's not a woman and he doesn't understand. He will fully have the rights. And if he has the qualifications on paper that he's a sexual therapist, you will have to allow him so then the girls will be forced to go and find somebody else if at that time there will be anyone else. Male and female will be sexually fluid. Sexual lines will first become blurred just as they're being blurred now. People say that they're two-spirit. People say that they're non-binary. People go to work as a man three days of the week and they have two gender identities. And if you forget which day of the week he's being a man or a woman and you call him the wrong name, he has the right to sue you. And this is not satire. This is not hyperbole. This is happening right now in America in real life. Sexual lines will be blurred as they're being blurred now, and then they will be crossed. Man will cross the lines even to lie with the beasts. Human beings will fornicate with animals such as cows, sheep, and household pets. 
Women will lie down with dogs and such abominations will abound in home videos as people give in to demonic imaginations that will seize them. Demonic imaginations means that you ignore everything I've said in this video and you start to wonder what it will be like to be with your schnauzer. Once you think it, Satan will hook you and you will end up doing it and having your roommate film it for the Lord says that these home videos will be made and they will be put online. They will be highly sought after as a kind of performance art. This thing may exist. It may already be being done. It may be on that place that they call the dark web. You will not need to go to the dark web. Google will take you to this content because the Lord says it will be called performance art and it will be a highly sought after form of entertainment to watch a man or a woman lie with an animal for money. This will entertain the rich and wealthy at private club parties. Even in pornography, this is the movies that you have to go hunting for now. The Lord says that bestiality will enter as a type of genre. And he says, even to children, this act will be done. Even to children who cannot consent. And if you remember last year, when I was sludging through these prophecies, I spoke of this thing called the sex industry flop house in places like Tennessee, New Orleans, Florida, where among the different horrific acts that I saw being done, I saw that a child was made subject to some horrible dog and a rich man was sitting there puffing on a cigar and watching them. If you come to this prophecy, you don't remember the details. You come to this channel, you don't pay attention to the different things I'm saying. That's on you. It is not because I did not say them. It says people will experiment in their homes with household pets. And the Lord says that the angel of the Lord will cut down every person who does this. You do this, don't think that you're coming back from this. Please listen to me. Please listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Do not think that this is one of those sins where, you know, I did it in my past. and that You're not coming back from this. Your, your reward is going to be death. Who does this? The angel of the Lord will strike you and they will be like, oh, she had a sudden heart attack. They might not even know what you're doing at home. They may not know about the home movies, but they will find you cold and frozen as your reward for doing this thing. The sword of my angel will be bloody with the blood of evildoers. For I said that all who do this deserve death and not mercy. There can be no confusion on this channel. No one will leave here confused about what the stakes are, what the bottom line is, what God requires. This is not your average church program. This is the truth that someone should have told this nation a long time ago. He says that the angel of the Lord will have a bloody sword because it will cut down the evildoers because you do this. God says that you are an evildoer and what you deserve is death and not mercy. Bestiality is forbidden. It is an abomination to lie with an animal as you would lie with a male or female. It is a thing that ought never to be done. The next part is pedophiles. Excuse me, please. Pedophiles will be integrated in society. First, it will become less hated it will become less vilified. To vilify something is to point, paint it as villainous, to say that it is heinous, it is hateful, it ought never to be done. But God says that people will begin to soften towards pedophilia, something that maybe as you listen now you can't understand, but you, can, you cannot deny that the pedophile movement is certainly gaining ground. One of the ways that they're gaining ground is by changing what they call themselves the word pedophilia lets us know that this is heinous and unacceptable. But when you hear minor attracted person, it makes you feel that there are small people out there capable of sexual feelings and they're also attracted to these grown people that should never be near infants, youth, small children. So less hated and less vilified says, as more people suffering from the effects of this sexual immorality spirits, they will become less interested in adults, and they will be more interested in underage youth. 
The Lord says that the first casualties will be the older youth. This is your 60-year-old looking at your 19-year-old. This is your 45-year-old looking at the 17-year-old. This is the 32-year-old looking at the 16-year-old underage youth. But he says progressively we will see the bar drop lower and lower until even very young children will be in relationship with older people against their will and in their will. So these are the children I spoke of in the beginning, the ones who will want older boyfriends and the laws will change and you will not be able to stop your 14 year old Lolita with going out with a 49 year old. They will tell you that they're in love. The Lord even has said that girls will be with their father. Females will be with their father. Males will be with their mother. You read the Old Testament, you read Leviticus, and it says it is abomination for a man to lie with his father's wife. Father's wife is his mother. Why is God making these laws? Is there any word that is wasted from God's mouth? Did God write anything in the Bible because he was bored that Thursday and he had nothing to do? These rules were put in place because God knows the depravity of the human soul. And the worst part about it is that he has had to live that depravity generation after generation. Desire same for same is nothing new. The Romans did it. The Greeks were notorious for it. The Lord burned Sodom and Gomorrah for it. The Lord torched the city the city-state of Pompeii for it. It's nothing new. So clearly this perversion grows up like a mushroom in societies periodically. This is an old seed of Satan to pervert. And what Satan does is he will sow the field with this fornication, this type of wickedness, knowing Satan knows God better than people. It is an unfortunate and embarrassing shame. Satan knows that there's a line that once you cross it, he knows that God must answer. And Satan loves to push societies, peoples, individuals, nations to cross that line because once you cross that line, you become condemned to fire. You will burn. This is why the Lord never said that the end of America will be with snow, but that this country will be burnt to ashes from shore to shore, gate to gate, top to toe, sea to shining sea. This is why it doesn't end with snow for this country, but it ends with balls of fire and rockets coming from every end. There's a reason to every word that I have spoken here for the last few years. And if you've been listening, you would have pieced it together perfectly. Satan pushes the envelope because he knows once it's pushed to a certain place, God answers with fire, with vengeance, with an, a complete annihilation, a removal of those people from before his face. God was getting ready to do it to Israel. He told Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to destroy these people. And Moses had to say, God, please, you just brought us out of captivity. If you burn these people alive, they will say you did it because you were unable to bring them to the promise. Please complete the mission. God is not going to complete the mission with the American population because the American population is going to have men touching children and say that it's okay. There will be no laws against abomination in the end times. It will be a free for all society. And here is what God says to the righteous. My people will be greatly pierced by the pain of all they must see and endure for my sake. I hope you're hearing it. Maranatha crowd, I hope you're listening to me very clearly. This is a channel of sobriety. This is a channel where you will either be forced to wake up or you will have to leave because I cannot traffic in lies and delusion here. Many of you are deluded. It is not that the Lord is not coming. It is that you think the Lord is coming and you will have to endure nothing. You think Matthew 24 was actually written for another group of people. It was written for you. You are prepping and stockpiling and keeping Bibles and food and tuna and cans. And you think you are leaving it here for someone else. But as I used to say all the way back in 2019, not only will you eat the food you prepped, you will wish that you had prepped more. My people will be pained pierced by all they must see and endure for my sake. You will be right here watching the different age limits being dropped on the nightly news while your heart gently weeps. 
There will be a falling away of morality on all sides and anything that can be imagined will be acceptable and done. When laws are abrogated and removed, they're not just being removed so that people can say, well, you know, we got rid of that pesky law. No, I always said that when you see changes being made, the changes are being made so that sin can be enjoyed without feeling bad. In order to have pedophilia legal, you first need to make it that it's not bad. That's why it's been removed from the American um, book of mental illness, the, the roster of mental illness. It's, it's been removed. So it's no longer classified as a sickness, as a mental illness. And once we know that it's no longer actionable as a psychiatric disorder, then this is why you now see conversations that are beginning to look deeper into it. Like, how hateful is it really? Isn't this just a, a legitimate sexual desire, such as a man wanting a woman and a woman wanting a man, a man wanting a man? Isn't this just one more reflection of how sexuality is enjoyed? An 80-year-old wanting a 19-year-old? a 71 year old wanting someone who's 24? Isn't this just one more type of feeling? Once you begin to have these conversations on earth, you are looking at the dragon, speaking like a lamb, asking as he asked Eve, did God really say touching that fruit meant death? This is what you are looking at. And time and again, people think that these are human conversations of diversity and inclusion. You're basically signing on the dotted line for destruction. African countries that are starting to legalize this and practice this, you also are asking for God's attention in fire if you do this. South American countries, Brazil, Colombia, wherever you do this, Asia, wherever you do this, Thailand, with your lady boys, you are looking for fire. Sex between a man and a woman is my right order. That's my capital M-Y, Jesus Christ, the Lord Yah speaking. Sex is not between a man and a man. It is not between a woman and a woman. It is not between a man and a beast, nor is it between an adult and a child, a man of full age, and a woman of full age in married covenant is the order of the Lord. So if anyone contacts me after this day and asks me, I'm staying with my girlfriend of 16 years, I'm staying with my boyfriend of four years, but are we really doing wrong? May the Lord help you if I see that email. May he truly assist you on that day. After you have heard what is good, what is just, what is righteous, and you still think that there's an exception because you're already in sin, and then you think that I will co-sign the sin by maybe sending you one or two escape hatches that makes what you are doing okay. After the Lord has said, full age, married covenant, a recognized ceiling of deals according to the laws of wherever you live. To all who break my law, the first level, fornicators, that would be the people that I just spoke to two seconds ago, adulterers, lovers of themselves, this is literally, he said, people who love your same sex, you are a lover of yourself, not only when you masturbate, you are a lover of yourself, when you love someone who is just formed and looks like you, those who are partners to animals, and those who defile children, the severe judgment of the Lord rests upon all who do these things, and he will rightly measure his judgment to you in the appointed time, to all who lie with the works of the beast. Your judgment is upon you, and unless you repent, you will be judged by God. The last person that the Lord spoke of in this prophecy is once again, Beyonce knows. This is a prophecy of almost one year ago. And the Lord was saying that this woman participates in the sin of sodomy. And he speaks about blood that is called sacrifice blood. And I spoke about that blood when I was going through the sodomy ritual. How when people engage in this anal sex, 
that they do bleed. And the Lord called it sacrifice blood. And when they do it as part of a ritual, it is blood offered to this creature called the Baphomet, which is where they do their rituals and they make their offerings, male and female. They do that. The Lord says that she has made this sacrifice to the Baphomet God, and they are many who make it. This is not only in Hollywood. People are doing this in the banking sector. People are doing this in the legal sector. People are doing it everywhere. There's room for ascension and power. The Lord said in 2022, when I was going through this process, that many people in Africa are doing this, that the politicians make a lot of men especially enter into this, that in countries where people are struggling, where food is difficult, where it's hard to get jobs and promotions, that the politicians and other gatekeepers in, in the job industry, the employment industry, they tell men, well, you know, we've got this great job opening at the bank. We've got this great job opening at the agricultural ministry. We've got this great job opening here and there. And well, you know, um, it's just one time and, you know, there's a whole world ahead of you. And what the Lord said is that many people are entering into this and also because of the Freemason presence in Africa is greatly increasing. God says that these people have been there for a long time, but now they're starting to openly recruit, openly offer flashy cars and a flashy lifestyle, a paid apartment. And these young men who have never had an opportunity, even young women are starting to do this simply to get physical cash, to buy food, to get opportunities. If you're in Africa and you know about this, feel free, leave your comments below. Share the information that is there and warn others, share these videos. I'm not sitting and charging through this for no reason. I'm doing this so that people can get over themselves and get over their beliefs and get over their opinions and come into the depth of where God has pulled me. I'm not coming out of these depths for you. I will not come out to keep you comfortable and to keep you unoffended. I do not care what the response is. There's only one right response. And that right response is not even, even so Lord Jesus come. It is Lord fortify me unto these things to pray that my child will not become a lover of an 80 year old in an era where I am, in a time period where I am helpless, where I cannot go to child services. What will child services do? Child services will just whip out the new ordinances of whoever is ruling at that time and say, well, according to, you know, amendment this, the, the child is eight years old. The child is, is able to make decisions. Isn't that what we're doing now? Aren't the children being chemically castrated? And the parents and the doctors are saying that an eight year old and a 12 year old can make life changing decisions that affect their body, that make them effectively sterile. Isn't this what we're saying in America? That children who can't enter a bar and children who can't hold a license to drive are capable upstairs of making decisions to cut body parts off and to switch the tap of their hormones off and destroy themselves as young men and young women. If we can say that the children can make bodily autonomy decisions, if this country is actively trying to give children the right to have abortions without their parents knowing, why do people continue to think that the slippery slope actually has guardrails, that it's going to stop somewhere? It's not going to stop anywhere. It's going to go right into the pit of hell, like Jesus says. And the only thing that will stop it, or at least slow down the descent, is people who get serious and stop trying to run off to the clouds and realize that we are here on the ground. And if you want to be useful, you're going to have to stop complaining and stop crying and stop saying, oh, the poor children and actually learn how to pray so you can do something to help the poor children in your life, your neighborhood, your town, city, nation, state. And so these people do the sodomy ritual and he says they bleed from it and the blood is the sign of loyalty. And he says that this, this woman, Beyonce, it is the sign of her loyalty and fidelity to her God. The Lord says this woman is a high class witch of no repentance and no remorse. So to those of you who continue to come here and try to argue for her, I pity you on the last day when God raises you from death to ask you who hired you to be the defender and the lawyer of a sorceress. Woe to you. The judgment to her will be imputed to you as well because you were so unwise that when God was speaking, you thought your tongue was higher than what the Holy Spirit says. 
She has no remorse whatsoever, and she has not repented of her sorceries, though I gave her ample time to do so. And this is what the Lord says in the book of Revelation about the witch and sorceress, the false prophetess Jezebel. He said, I gave her time to repent of her sorceries. Sorcery is the highest level of witchcraft that a female can attain to. A male at the highest level is called a mage, not a magician, but a mage. But a female at the highest level is called a sorceress. This kind of person can bend reality to those of you so unwise that sit in the presence of the music, the lyrics, the videos, because you must hate your soul. You have to hate your soul to expose it to toxic waste and call it an album, an MP, a concert. You must hate your human soul. You must have a spare one somewhere that the rest of us are not aware of. This kind of person bends reality and cooks the brain cells so that you will consume what is spiritual waste and say, it was fire, slay, slay. It was fire. I can't wait for the LP and the new video to drop and everything, and I will sell my soul for tickets. The things you utter out of your mouth when Jesus raises you to life on the last day, the rest of us will pity you greatly. The Lord says he gave her ample time to repent. Ample time means that God is not using celestial first. It means before I came, God has sent message after message after message to this person. And they spurned it. That means before the public rebuke came here, people close in the inner circle had dreams. People close in the inner circle heard God and they crept quietly to give the warning and it was ignored and mocked. In another word the Lord has given, he said that this person openly mocks Jesus Christ, and for that, she will forfeit her life. So I always say to the hive, gather together, bring your strong reasons, and let us see if all millions of you can keep her alive after the judgment of the Lord is that she will forfeit her life. May your strength overpower his strength. He says, she will be destroyed for the destruction of my people, which she so brazenly does, which means openly curses the church, openly does sorcery and witchcraft on the church. And as I said, why does she do it? The church lacks wisdom. So they gather and think that they can eat at the table of the Lord and then eat at the table of the Baphomet worshiper, eat at the table of Satan's foremost female servant, for Satan's foremost, most loyal goddess. The church wants to go to church on Sunday and then drink lemonade on Monday and think that God will accept light and darkness in them. And this is how she has an opening to destroy the church openly. The Lord says that many, knowing this woman is in witchcraft, continue to persist with her. And he says that she also continues to persist in her destruction. She will fall down as a broken idol and be destroyed. I am celestial and this is the master's voice. The title of this prophecy is A Falling Away. August the 3rd, 2022, Powerful Spirits of Sexual Immorality, The Twisting and the Perversion of Human Identity, the separation of male from female, where God took a wife out of the man and formed for him a companion that he is supposed to be attracted to, love, and protect. All of this falling away to a twisted jumble of perversion that God will not tolerate. This prophecy is directed towards the United States of America, but all who practice her sins you will reap the same judgment of confusion in your nation. And if you push past that defining line, which for the purposes here is crossing into children and crossing into beasts, the judgment of fire upon America will come upon you also. This is the word of the Lord. I'm celestial. This is the master's voice. And until I see you again, goodbye.